Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to an exciting uh, video I have for you today for the third part of our course, um, Reconstructing the Authentic Self. As you know, you've been working with uh, different tools and techniques and ways to excavate parts of yourself and recreate and write the new story. And everybody has different ways of doing that. And so one of the ways that I like to do that is to work with dreams and metaphor and archetype. And I just had to invite one of my dear friends today to join in that conversation because I call her the queen of metaphor. She has an amazing heart, an amazing brain, an amazing soul, and she, wisdom. She, she's a wisdom keeper. And so I'm so grateful to know her and to be able to share some of her wisdom with you today on dreams and metaphor and archetypes. So my friend, Billy Ortiz. Hi, Billy. Thank you, Patty. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited. I, you know, I, you and I can talk for hours and hours and hours, well, days and days and months and years. I mean, we've been doing that for a long time. We um, connected a while ago and um, realized that we had a mutual interest in dreams. And when I found out that you brought Jeremy Taylor to Colorado and did retreats with him twice a year, I thought, First, then I thought I had died and gone to heaven, but then when I met Jeremy for the first time, I really had died and gone to heaven. And then when he pulled, when he pulled my dream, the first group that I did with him and he, you know, his projection was I had a book to write. It just catapulted me into my first book. So, I mean, it's, there's no words to describe my gratitude and, and awe in how people show up in our lives. And so thanks for sharing your wisdom with us today. Well, thank you for inviting me. And yes, I remember the the moment at the retreat when we pulled your name to work the dream the first time you attended. And that was one of the first things out of Jeremy's mouth that was, if this were my dream, I have I might have a book to write. And ever, all of us are like, what? How did he get that? So it was a very, um, a very um, emotionally charged moment that I will always remember. So I'm glad that, that that's... Um, that helped to catapult you into writing all these books. Oh yeah, I was determined after that. I had put it away because I'd been rejected by a couple publishers and, and I just kind of forgot about it. And I went, oh, right, I was writing a book. So Jeremy was great. And, and just Jeremy's just, was he, he passed away two years ago. And um, I know it was a big loss for you and all of us, and but especially you because you were, you worked so closely with him for so many years. Mm -hmm. What a gift he was and is I know he's still with us in spirit um in 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 this work and so you know I know all of us myself I can speak for myself is so grateful for you to continue um the legacy of that important work and also you know you bring so much already even without Jeremy so let's get started let's talk about um you know this chapter is all about reconstructing the authentic self and you know I know um I'm gonna say it um just to, to kick it off is that, you know, Jeremy always says no dream comes to tell us only what we already know. Yeah. So the reason I think dreams are so valuable in terms of reconstructing the authentic self, I just want to say, speaking of dream images, here's my little, <laughs> little love. Lovely. Excited to join us. So if you, if you knew why, if you could figure out why I was like rubbing my lap. <laughs> um, Anyway, so it, it comes to give us information, and I love working with dreams, so I'm gonna let you take that in terms of, of how that helps people get a better understanding of their authentic self. And dreams don't just, the funny part about dreams is they don't come and they just, they don't go, okay, here's the bullet points of what you need to do to reconstruct your right. <laughs> They come in symbols and metaphors. So yeah. um, I know it's not a question, but I'm just gonna, let you take it from there and, and share a little bit about what that means in the dream and dream work for you. Sure. Um, well, what you're saying is right. Part of the toolkit that Jeremy put together was um, one of the bullet points <laughs> in the six items that he puts together is that no dream comes to tell us just what we already know. They always break new ground and give us new insight. And that's one of the reasons why it's very difficult to work on our dreams on our own. Uh, part of my theory and part of my passion is um, I think the dreams are intended to be worked with others. And that's why I often bring 
groups together. And now I'm bringing groups together on Zoom because, you know, that's my only option at the moment. Uh, but it works just as well if we're in the same room or if we're on a, a video screen together. So no dream comes to tell us just what we already know. So, it, so there's this idea that the, the dream is always going to bring me some information that I don't know about myself yet. And as you said, it's going to be written in metaphor. So it's not going to be clear uh, right off the bat. But the metaphor comes so that it means, because it, it can mean many different things at the same time. So it comes in as an image rather than a sentence that tells me why, you know, Billy, I think you should, you know, uh, distance yourself from your family of origin, that kind of thing. It's going to show me a different kind of a version of that so that I can um, embrace all the meanings at the same time. Right. And to me, I enjoy that. Some people, you know, and I, with clients, I'll work with, a, I love when my clients bring me dreams, you know, but some clients, they say, oh, I don't dream, you know, you know that, I think they all dream and you can speak to that. But some people are like, they don't, they don't give it much. Uh, they think it's just our brains replaying something from the day or whatever. And I also, so a couple things I want to say about that is it's also, I enjoy doing it because it's kind of like a puzzle to me. So, you know, I, I, I get playful with it. Well, that was interesting. I had a dream about a skunk the other night. <laughs> so, ah. You go, you know, that's a whole metaphor we could work with forever. You know, but somebody might say, oh my God, I had a dream about a skunk. That's disgusting. Um, and it didn't spray in the dream. So, you know, one would say, well, at least it didn't spray. <laughs> but still, there's so much yeah. more meaning to that skunk. And hopefully in the dream group tonight, maybe my name will be pulled and we can work this kind of dream. But my point is, you know, we live in such a left brain world right now that people want, again, the bullet points. So if a dream's going to come to tell me something, then why doesn't it just tell me? You know, right. it requires, it requires an, um, tenacity maybe and a commitment and a willingness to to move into this imaginal state or the end right. of the metaphor and some people just they're like we don't want any part of that so yeah it's it it takes effort you know and it requires some some focus and attention as you said um i think that's part of the reason why they they are so complex and i also think that the dream well if it's a particularly um strong image that that I, that stays with me and i continue to think about that dream it i often say dreams don't have expiration dates because um, i can rework that dream later years later even and i'm a different person that's working that dream so that's part of the reason why i think that they have to come in the language of metaphor so it doesn't matter what time in my life that i'm looking at this image in this dream i can look at it when I'm 20, I can look at it when I'm 30 and, and ad infinitum, as they say, you know, so it's, it's, if I want it, I can continue to get um, information out of the dream. So what are some archetypal dream themes in the collective right now that you have noticed? Yeah, there's been this interesting theme come up um, where someone thinks that this, somebody's building something in the dream and they think that something's being destroyed. Um, like, uh, like an example is um, this dream I worked recently, the person arrives at this place and she says, oh, that, that's my mountain, that's my hill or whatever. And she notices there's these um, workers that are, that are digging through the, the uh, side of the hill and they're actually creating these beautiful stone steps and but she keeps going but what are they doing they're destroying they're destroying my hill they're destroying what is who are these people and she wants to get get rid of them but as we worked that dream in a group lots of people were asking this how what are, what were the steps like and and she describes these actually exquisitely beautiful steps but there was something about the destruction of that hill in order to make it more beautiful and more useful, it still felt frightening to the dreamer. So that's something about letting, in my version of that, it's letting go of some paradigm, some, some way that I, I something as, as, as solid as a hill, um, I think it's my hill. <laughs> and it's like, there, there's this idea of something beautiful and more creative is going to be, be um, constructed out of that. But at first, as the dreamer, I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm holding on to what I know. 
Um, the another one that comes to mind is um, there's well, a dream. A hang, dreamer. On, hang on a second, because what you're talking about is in line with reconstructing the authentic self house model that I use. And oh. I think that's what we're talking about is restoring. We're talking about, you know, the second chapter of this course was about excavating the neurobiology of not being good enough and recognizing all the things that we do that kind of hold us back in relation to our um, insecurities and self-doubt. And then we reconstruct the authentic self by these methods, like dream work is one of them. So that's just, I love that it even showed up in the dream as a house. I know um, when I was working on this model of reconstructing the authentic self and I was telling you about it, you're like, that's perfect. Cause that's, you know, in the dream world, a house represents our, yeah. our self, you know, how this is, this is our identity in the world. And that's what reconstructing the authentic self is all about is really looking at who we are and what we want to be based on our inner knowing versus what right. the, everybody else has told us. So that dream to me speaks so much to that whole process. I yeah. also, what came up for me when you were talking was, you know, you and I are going to be doing this group and people might watch this video afterwards and we'll be able to see it recorded. But on May right. 16th, you and I are going to be talking about the tower in the Tarot, which right seemed very much like that too, where this, you know, everything kind of, you know, blows up, falls apart, but that, that allows for the reconstruction of something new. And that's a lot of the time that we're in as well. So those are my two projections I got when you were talking about the, the streamer stream. Yeah, it's uh, exactly. It's at first, it seems as though, oh no, something's being destroyed, but sometimes Things have to be leveled to the ground in order to build exactly with the image of, of the tower, as you mentioned, that in my version of the metaphor is it's all about that letting go of things that have been built and we think they're solid, but it, as it as it turns out, they need to come down so that that the new new world can be built. Yeah, and I think we're very much in that paradigm right now of what we're experiencing with the with the pandemic uh, and the social distancing, um, everything that we have known so far has, has tried to, had to be reconstructed. Right, right. And it's, it's so fascinating to me to look at it in the symbols and, the, and how it shows up in the archetypes and the metaphors. But um, again, so, and maybe having this time of having to go in and, and our lives slow down, and that's why I wrote this course, is because it gives us time to maybe reflect on some of those things that we wouldn't have taken the time to, oh my gosh, I don't have to look at the hills or my, everything on the hills. It's just a dream, you know, but instead to give ourselves permission to just be in that wonder and awe. Um, so, okay. That was, I had to share my projections because I thought it was such a good fit for the, uh, uh, you know, reconstructing the authentic self house model. So you That's why it, came, it came to mind. Um, one other image that I remember just quickly is um, one of the dreamers I worked with, um, she had a, she wakes up in the dream and she feels as though her entire abdomen area is a hole, just an empty hole. Mm. And she hears this loud sound. Um, she says, I don't know if it's an avalanche or an earthquake. And then suddenly um, all of this dirt, this soil comes through a window and fills up this hole in her abdomen and all these beautiful saplings and, and um, uh, little wildflowers come up and they all remind her of a very pleasant time in her life. And she has this sense of peace and beauty um, from something that's off camera, as Jeremy would say, off camera, we have this avalanche that she hears, uh, but, it, but the soil, comes into this emptiness in, in the body and suddenly all this all this new growth sprouts. Um, I just thought that was such an incredibly interesting image. And in my projection, my version of that, it's a mandala, which is one of the other areas I'm talking about in this section of the course is doing mandalas. Because when I saw that empty circle in her belly that gets filled with this growth, you know, to draw a mandala of that would be definitely something I would do as, as that dreamer. Um, and so I guess that's an example of how all these different ways we reconstruct the authentic self kind of can weave together. You know, a dream, dream work can take us into a creative expression, like our friend Brenda, who does all that beautiful dream art. Um, how, however, we can bring to life, and that's what's happening in my version of this dreamer's dream, is 
bringing to life something out of the emptiness. And I think, yeah, and out of what what is seemingly destruction represented by the avalanche and it's just or earthquakes. So it, I my I think it's both and. It's probably um, it's happening both at the same time. There's some upheaval. And these are a few dreams that that um, I worked on before the social distancing was was put into effect. So I think there was something in the collective unconscious that that there's going to be some um, destruction which will end up being constructive as as time goes on. Right. I've been listening to a couple of my favorite teachers like Carolyn Mace and Joe Dispenza and, and um, Bruce Lipton. And the messages that they're saying is we've been preparing for this. You know, we've been in this immersion of um, raising consciousness by a lot of our retreats and spiritual practices more so than we had, say, you know, 10, even 10, 20 years ago. So I do think that a lot of the collective has been preparing because if we weren't prepared for this right now, we, I mean, it would be even harder. It's hard enough as it is. Here comes my kitty. She, she brought me a little toy. She's like thinking she's got her conquest. She, she wants to be interviewed too. She wants me to be proud. Talk about metaphor. That's a good kitty. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's interesting that these ha these dreams, which seem very much archetypal in terms of what's happening now, were actually in the unconscious even prior to the now, um, which is a really good way to recognize there's really no time even in the dream world, right? Um, oh, no, they live outside of time. That's why I was saying, um, you know, before when I said no dream has an expiration date, um, they live in the in the now. The, t the time is now. That's why I often say to people, I, I, in fact, I, I request it, is if you're going to share the dream, share it in present tense, um, because it keeps it alive. It's, it's, if I say, well, I went into the store and I saw, it's a, that's like something that already happened. So immediately we, we just think, okay, that's finished. But if I walk into the store and I see, is a whole different version of that. So um I recommend everybody do that. Record your dreams in present tense and share them in present tense as well. Right, because all the, I one of my lines is the point of power is in the present moment. And I think, you know, we have to really be present in the moment as it is right now, instead of, you know, it happened in the past or it might happen because then we miss what we're, right. really, we're really learning about ourselves in the moment. So I think that's reflected in, in that dream work being even present time. Yeah. Um, one of the things in terms of, well, there's so many things in terms of how we restory, write a new story and reconstruct the authentic self. Mm -hmm. But what I say a lot of times is, you know, we don't really have a good story for what we want. You know, we have a lot of, speaking of past and present and future, we have a lot of stories of the old dysfunctional family models, you know, the shame based, do as I say, not as I do. You should be ashamed of yourself you know, are you ever going to amount to anything, get a real job, you know, all the things that we've been told. And when we're told those things before we're seven, they kind of stick like glue. And so my work is really helping people excavate those old antiquated, familiar, confabulated beliefs about themselves right. and then write a new story. But then the challenge is mm -hmm. I don't have any, any story to to right. imagine what's the new story yeah, yeah. so <laughs> imagination is key yes. here and and but many of the old stories again this is why sometimes people are resistant to doing art you know because they think they're not good enough and you know a lot of kids were told to get out of your imagination get in the real world and you know before seven kids are all imagination they believe in the tooth fairy and the easter bunny and and all those things so anyway my work is really to help people imagine the new story without getting too frustrated because they don't, they can't do it because it's just not in their frame of reference. So dream work to me and imagination is such an important way of creating a new story. Oh, very much so, yeah. It's almost like writing your own screenplay, you know, like make it up, but it's really sometimes challenging for people because again, we just kind of go back to what's familiar because um, there's a comfort in what the body knows. And so to create something new, moving into imagination um, and metaphor and archetype, I think is so valuable. 
And I love, 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 you know how much I love this. <laughs> At the end of, you do dream retreats twice a year and prior to Jeremy's passing, you were bringing him here and you work so friggin' hard on this. It, you just amaze me because huh. your, your, your heart and is so into it that you can stay up all night, literally, <laughs> and go up the next morning and look as if you're just as fresh as, you know, spring daisy. So you're like so into what you do because it comes and this is why I think this is so valuable when we do work that really comes directly from heart you know and we're living our, our calling it shows up in you so well and so by the end of Friday night all day Saturday Sunday morning you close with why you do this work and it usually brings us all to tears so I'm going to invite you, if you're okay with that, and closing our time together with um, your rendition of why you do this work. Oh, yeah, it takes, I have to take a deep breath with this one, because <laughs> um, it feels, I feel it so uh, strongly. And yeah, it's my passion. And, and um, people ask me a lot, they say, well, why do you spend so much time and effort on this? And why do you spend so much money and drive yourselves crazy? It's because it's so important. and um, I feel as though we, are, as you mentioned earlier, we are, there's such a linear way of looking at things and people have become so rational that we're running the risk of losing our ability to think and express ourselves in metaphor. And metaphor is the language of the soul. It's the language of our dreams. It's the language of sacred narrative and poetry and beautiful storylines. So there's, so there's a sense of, you know, if I lose my ability to think in metaphor, I run the risk of losing my imagination. And if I lose my imagination, I lose my compassion. Because if I can't imagine being someone else, then I cannot have compassion for them. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, that's what the work's all about. Everything leads to how do I learn a better sense of, it, of understanding and expressing compassion. Thank you, Billy. I think that that always touches me so much. And it's so much about what we're doing here because it's about compassion. And when we lose our compassion, man, what good are we to each other? And in our self-compassion too. So when I do a pro like Jeremy uses the projective dream work and maybe I know I'm like, well, <laughs> I told you that we could talk forever and ever and ever we go on and on and on. But the projective model, I'll let you speak to just for a minute and then we will close. But um, it is then my self-compassion that allows me to have compassion for the other. So, uh, I, um, so you, I can just yeah. say quickly, yeah. uh, um, we, it's always important, important if you're sharing a dream with someone and, um, uh, ask them to please use the method of, if this were my dream, because if somebody says you, your dream and you, then immediately that's accusatory. And, and the dreamer will shut down. But if I use the, if I put everything in the eye and I say, if this were my dream, in my version of this, I might think it might mean this. And then continue to ask the questions in eye and keep it in eye as much as possible because then it works both ways. The dreamer has a chance to accept and, or take it or leave it. Um, and I hear myself saying it as well. So it's true for me as, as well. So it becomes a, a transpersonal experience where both of us are sharing these metaphors and symbols of the dream. And everybody's dream becomes everybody's dream in that way. Yeah. And I love it. I love the idea of how metaphor helps the imagination and the compassion. And um, yeah, what you do is very, very sacred and important. And I appreciate you. Oh, thank and you. your time today. Thank you for sharing. Um, Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, it's so. Uh, uh, your website is wakeuptoyourdreams.com. And is anything coming up you want to let people know about? Well, Even though this will air, I don't know. I mean, we're, it, anyway, go ahead. Well, I offer, I offer two groups throughout the week um, via Zoom, of course. Um, there's an evening group that meets two Tuesdays a month, and then there's an afternoon group that meets two Thursdays a month. And you can go to my website and look at, at the calendar and see the exact dates. Um, and then as you mentioned earlier, Patty, we have on Saturday, May 16th, we have a free group. Um, we offer this free to people as a service 
um, for going through this social distancing to give you a chance to look at, at the metaphor of it and the symbolism of it rather than the facts and figures that we get on the news constantly. So that's May 16th. We're gonna concentrate on the archetype of the tower. It's from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Mountain Time. And as I said, it's free. But we only ask that you sign a media release so that we can record the group. And then your retreat, I know, very sad to say you had to oh. It was gonna be this coming weekend, right? Yes, it was going to be May 1st through the 3rd. It would have been retreat number 34. <laughs> and it was a heartbreak to, to cancel that. Um, I knew it was coming, and I had to contact the venue. And when I typed out the message, yeah, there was a lot of tears involved with that. It, because I just love having you know this wonderful, loving group of people together. And when we get away to the retreats, we share our meals together. And I fi finally found this exceptional venue that was just really out in the country it's very peaceful and anyway so yeah i don't know what the evolution of that's going to be but um as i said you know sometimes things have to be pulled down to the ground so something new can be born so there's a possibility it will happen in october but as everything else in the world right now we don't know but it's right. an amazing opportunity if anyone, um, you know, when things get to the place where we can all be together again, I highly recommend. And Billy's online work now is, is really valuable. And that's great that you can keep doing that online. So, thank you. Thank, thank you so much. And um, yeah, wakeuptoyourdreams.com. Thanks, Billy.